got a really interesting activity for all of us to do after church today. Oh. Are you interested? Yeah. It'll only take just a little bit of time. We're all going to go down to the Kansas River and we're going to cross it on dry ground. Right? See, you go first, right? God has told me that the river is going to part and we're all going to be able to cross the river on dry ground. You ready to go try it? Yes. Yeah. Yep. yep, we got one who is. You know, two that are. You know, I have to tell you, it takes an act of faith, doesn't it? Yep. Remember I've always told you that the Red Sea did not part until the first Hebrew got his foot wet. It's the same with the Jordan River. It didn't part until some Hebrew man put his foot in that water and trusted God to stop the Jordan from flowing. That person, that person who first stepped into the Red Sea, that person who first stepped into the River Jordan, stepped out in faith. They stood out in their faith, not knowing if that water was going to collapse on them, only having faith that God would care for them. That God would do what God said. Now that's a hard thing for us to do at times. But that's what stepping out in faith means. It means we trust that God will do what God said God will do. Do you? Do you always believe that God will do what God said God will do? That's pretty tough. Standing out in faith can be a scary thing at times. It can be, for some of us, almost impossible to believe that God would work in our lives. That God could somehow make us different people than what we are. That God could somehow transform us into God's children. Us with all of our problems. Us with all of our cares. Us with all of our weaknesses. Us with all of our foibles. Us with all of our sin. And yet, God said God would make us God's children. Amen? Amen. God said that He would be with us always. That God would never depart. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Will God do what God said? Yes. Will Jesus fulfill His own words? If so, when we get to the Jordan, we know that Jesus is with us. If we stick our foot in the water, the water will part. And Jesus will go through it with us on dry ground. Do you believe that God went through the Red Sea? God did. Right? It wasn't too long ago, just a week ago, that we celebrated Reformation Day. It's the 500th anniversary of the Protestant Church. Martin Luther began it all 500 years ago. Do you think Martin Luther had to stand out on his face and stand up to the church that he saw corruption in 500 years ago? In fact, they brought Martin Luther to trial for what he believed. They could have burned him at the stake. They could have taken his life away from him for the things that he saw wrong with the church and dared to say. And when they tried him, he stood out in his faith. And he said he was standing out on his faith. Martin Luther's own words, here I stand, I can do no other. That's a pretty bold statement for a Christian to make, isn't it? Here I stand. I can do no other. How about the Apostle Paul? Do you think he stood out in his faith? Here was a Pharisee. He says, I was a Pharisee among the Pharisees. A powerful, educated man who had a writ in his hand to kill as many Christians as he could or to bring them to trial. And then, on the road to Damascus, he was struck down. <coughs> Remember the story? He was blinded. And Jesus Christ said, I'm the one whom you're persecuting, Saul. But from now on, you're going to preach the word. Saul. Now, he sent one to, to 
to get Paul because Paul was drowned, was blind. Now, how would you like to be a Jew who was sent to go get the blind killer of Jews? This guy who was known for his viciousness in attacking the early church. You stand out on your faith and you say, God, I will go. I will go. I'll do what you can. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. But I'm going to go. And then Paul, with the reputation he had, do you, is there anyone here who thinks your reputation in the community is worse than what Paul's was among the Christians? Even with a bad reputation, Paul stood out in his faith. He stood out there. And he said, I'll do it. Jesus, I'll go where you send me. I'll preach to whom you send me. And we know Paul traveled a lot. He went to a lot of different cities. He converted a lot of different people. He witnessed to people who wanted him dead. But still, he went, didn't he? I followed a lot of preachers in the churches. Preachers who had big shoes that I didn't think I could fill. Preachers who were older than me, wiser than me, especially if you can imagine me preaching at 21 years old at first church. Following a very beloved, loved pastor in this church. Can you imagine Joshua? Following Moses? You think Moses had some pretty big sandals? Joshua's first job. Oh, my microphone, you want me to turn it on? Can you hear me? Now you can hear me better. Joshua's first job in building Moses' sandals was to take people across a river that was supposed to drive. Not only did he fill the big sandals, but he did a big task. I wouldn't want to follow the Reverend Moses in his church. That would be a tough church to live. And yet he stood up, Joshua stood up, and he walked his faith. He did what he was supposed to be. So here's the thing about standing out for faith. You have to be courageous, don't you? You have to be courageous to live your faith in a world that is increasingly against you living your faith. In a world that we, we know that in other parts of this world, Christians are being martyred still to this day. They're being killed for their faith. Egypt is a good place to, to, to look at to see Coptic Christians who are being martyred for their faith. Are they giving up their faith? No, they're standing out in their faith and they're trusting God. And the Coptic Christian Church continues in Egypt because those people are willing to step out of their faith and they're going to be courageous in following God. Courageous, not timid. Sometimes I think we get apologetic that we're, that we're people of faith. Sometimes we don't mean to impose upon you, but we're the Christian church and we'd like to tell you about Jesus. How is that different from the hymn we destroy to tell to the nations? We have a large responsibility to witness our faith. We've talked about it the last two weeks. That means we have to be courageous enough to stand out in our faith, to be a Christian around our neighbors. Now, there will be some who looked at you before you became a Christian, and they will go, you know that Mickey, I know what she's like. I remember what she was like. But you're different now because God's renewed you in Christ Jesus. Amen? We are all or somebody before we knew Jesus. And that someone may not have been very pretty. We may have been basically good, and Jesus rounded that off. But some of us may have walked a different path, far from God. But there's no limit to where God's grace can reach. God will go to the farthest distance to touch your heart and bring you God's realm. God's love will reach out and change who we are, no matter what our past was. No matter what it was, God loves us enough to make us 
God is a joke. And all we have to do is stand out in faith and take it. And take it. Our church in this community needs to be a courageous church. Our church needs to be courageous as it's never been create, uh, uh, courageous before. We need to continue to open our doors. We need to continue to reach out to even the people that we're missing in this community. We need as a church, as a congregation, to stand out in our faith, to make the votes that we need to make, to extend the ministry of this church to even more and more people. We just have a message. God loves you. God wants you as a child. And we want you to be bold enough to say yes. Just to say yes. Amen? It helps if it shows that we've said yes. It helps if we're create, uh, courageous enough to step out and live in our faith. We have the testimony of the saints this day. Think of the saints. Those who have been martyred. Those who were in the Colosseum who were martyred for their faith. Those who were persecuted by the other churches, the other religions that were around at that time. The Roman pagan religions. The Jewish people who finally said to the Christians, you can no longer worship in our synagogues. The Gentile populations, when Paul went out, that uh, that uh, did not necessarily want the Christian church to prosper. The story of the saints is their courageousness. They're willing to step out and pay no matter what, and do courageous acts, to do, uh, to do courageous deeds, to speak courageously and say, here I stand, I can do no other. I'm a Christian. And I don't care if you like it or don't. Amen? I'm a Christian. If you take the Lord's name in front of me, I don't care if it's in the middle of Crown Center, I'm going to call you down. <laughs> if you hurt one of my neighbors, I'm going to witness to you. Believe me, I'm going to witness to you. I'm going to be a Christian in public, not just in the pews, not just in the pulpit. I'm going to be a Christian in my neighborhood. I'm going to be a Christian. It's easy for me to be a Christian on the job. You all kind of expect that. But you need to be a Christian on the job too, yes? You need to be a Christian in your family. Everywhere you go, in Walmart, be. I can't think of a better place to be a Christian than during this Christmas shopping season. I remember last year, Vicky tried to pull into a space in this truck, no stint version. And he cost her. Oh, did he cost her. And when someone gets road rage like that, I have one thing I do. I go. <laughs> you may not know what I'm saying, but you know what this means, right? We have to do it. We have to be courageous in every situation to be Christians, to reflect the Lord that we worship. What kind of saint will you be this day? What kind of saint will you be this week? Will you be the saint that's courageous enough to stand out on your faith, that others will see Christ in you, and the grace of God that works through you will move others to God's family, who will bring others to the community of Christ? That's what remembering the saints is all about. Their courageousness. Their willingness to stand up. If you had lost two churches to a flood, would you build a third? You're standing in the courageousness of the generation that built this building. And they said, here this building will stand, we can do no other. They got smart this time. They put steel structures in here. That's hard to knock down steel, isn't it? Someone was courageous enough to bring church plans before an administrative board. And this building is part of their courageousness after the first two were knocked down by the flood. Oh. I bid you this day to be the courageous church. 
You be the saints who in this community stand out for your faith. Stand out in living. Stand out in speaking. Stand out in being. In Jesus' name, amen.